Sounds tight radio in the spot. This shit right here is exclusive. And I do this for everybody. I don't care where you at or who you are. This is for you. Let's go. Sounds tight radio, the indie spot. Welcome, welcome, welcome to an exclusive Juneteenth uh show. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a real good one. We got some special guests on the line with us. Got some things we're gonna talk about. Um for everybody tuning in. I know a lot of people listen or, and, and watch um, the We Are One episode one a couple weeks ago. Um, it's on YouTube right now. If you want to go check it out again or, or share with your friends. Um, this is episode two. So we're continuing from what we talked about last time. Um, like I said, we got some special guests on tonight that's going to continue this dialogue. I think it's something that we're, we're definitely missing in, in, in the community around the world. It's, it's something that we're doing to, to bring everybody together, to bring awareness to a lot of these situations, a lot of topics and subjects um, that's been on your mind. Um, this is your opportunity to speak about it and to, to, to really be about it. A lot of us can't get out there and protest like we want to, you know, but um, to have a forum, uh, a, a place where we can politic and have this dialogue is special. So with that said, as always, Brother Compton is on the line with us live and direct. Yes. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling all right, man. I got my pops here, Ribby. How's everybody? All right. You know, I'm feeling good, right. man. I'm, I'm ready to get at it. Nice, nice, nice. And, and, and for those who don't know, Brother Terrell Adams, I'm gonna call him the champ because he's the champ in my mind. You know, <laughs> brother, brother Terrell Adams, uh, how you doing, my man? I'm doing amazing, man. It's definitely a pleasure to be on here. You know what I'm saying? Definitely in observance to the Juneteenth. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's amazing to be fellowshipping with a lot of brothers on here, man. I'm I'm more than excited. That's all right. That's all right. And 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 then last but not least, we got Pastor Warren on the line with us. How you doing, Pastor? Doing great, son. How you doing? I'm um, all right. And for those who don't know, he just called me, sir. That is my daddy right there. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We put it out there. Um, so, so with that being said, um, I just want to jump right into it. There's been, it seems like a continuation of, of what we <clears throat> experienced over the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and, and surprisingly, uh, just, just to start it off, there was a few hangings uh, in the United States. Um, this, this, uh, these last couple of weeks, you know, and California has always been one of those neutral places. You know, when you hear things of, of somebody getting hung or something like that, you really don't think of California, but it happened in, right in our backyard, right? So I want to kick it off with, uh, with Brother Compton, man. Go ahead and give me your thoughts on the hangings uh, of these gentlemen um, in, our, in our great nation. I think, uh, I think it's the old saying, man. If you don't remember the past, you shall repeat it. You know, and, 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 a, and a lot of stuff is going on in the world right now. Um, unfortunately, that is bringing light to the past. You get what I'm saying? And this is just an example of exactly what the past was. This is this is daily news for people that were born, you know, before our generation, like my pop's generation and, and my grandmother and grandfather's generation. This was something that they seen in the paper but couldn't say anything about. But now we got the rights right now to say something about it. And, right. you know, it's, it's, it's despicable. You know, it's ridiculous, right. you know. And for me, you know, I'm always the aggressive one. You know, it, it, it can't continue. It right. can't happen. Right. You know, so I hope the investigations that they're doing into all of these uh, happen quickly. I hope that the families go out and get individual uh, autopsies and investigations on their own because, once again, we're fighting against the justice system, man, that is unjust to us. Okay, and with that, with that said, Brother Chira, I want to I bring you in, in into the loop on, on this one. Uh, how do you feel about the, um, the, the, the I, I hate to say the word in the year 2020, but the lynchings that we're saying? I mean, it's, 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 it's terrible, you know what I'm saying, because it's like, Everybody that came before me in terms of generation, they've experienced and lived through that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for it to be a modern day occurrence, like in a sense, I, I feel like as 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 black people here in America, we kinda we we we've gotten comfortable in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Like we we let our, our guard down and, and, and this right here, we all know it's not cool, it's, it's unacceptable, but at the same time, like we gotta start recognizing that strength in numbers is definitely gonna be the solution in these regards. Right, right, I agree. I agree, and, and Pops, you know, uh, uh, Pop, Papa Compton, we gotta differentiate for the night, <laughs> right. Papa Compton, jump on in here with us. Uh, how do you feel about this? 
I feel, I feel like like these two gentlemen, these two black men that uh that got hung. See, because from 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 my point of view, a black man, one thing he does not know about is a putting a loose around his neck and hanging himself. Right. That's something that we don't even care to be looking at. We don't go backwards. We move forward. Right. And right. I, I look at it like uh, this is something that the FBI or whoever, they really need to investigate because mm -hmm. somebody out there in San Bernardino, some kind of group out there in San Bernardino, they have some, they have some issues right now with the black man. You know, and that's what they need to be. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they got cameras all over. This was done at City Hall, man. Yes. This was yes. done at City Hall. You gonna tell me they don't have cameras all around City Hall? I don't believe it. You know, and th that's what I was gonna gonna you know start start alluding to when it, when it comes down to it. You have you have Robert Fuller next to City Hall. You mean to tell me there's no cameras like you're saying? You have, uh, you know, Malcolm Harsh in, in Victorville, right? I mean, my, a couple miles down the way. Right. Then you have uh, Dominique Alexander, you know, in, in Manhattan, New York. Um, and then there's, uh, I, I haven't read a, up on it today, but to find the name, but an unidentified team in, uh, in Houston at an elementary school. Now, I live walking distance from an elementary school. There's cameras all around this. So it has to be. You got ch your children's lives at stake. Man. Vandalism. I mean, this is a public place of education so there's cameras everywhere um so with that said they're calling it suicide we're calling it lynching i'm going to turn the tables to pastor warren how do you feel and what are your thoughts on this uh suicide versus lynching did we lose can you, can you, you got I think we're, I, we got Hello? you we got you there you are you're there okay you know Truth be told, it never stopped. Lynchers have always been in the United States. There have not been as many. And I remember back in the early 80s, uh, late 70s, Ron Sellers was supposedly hung himself in San Diego. He was another number three running back in the state of California. Yeah. And they said that he hung himself. He had no reason to have hung himself. You know, Sandra Bland, you know, they say she hung herself. The modern day lynchings, we know it's uh, something that's going to be racially um, caused, if you will, for lack of a better word. It's, there's a racial thing going on. Right. But for our president to not say anything, you know, when he, when he incites violence from those who support him against black people, he has given, really, from, from my perspective, he's given emboldened uh, white supremacists and those who are, who are the far right movement to perpetrate crimes. He's give, you know, the, 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 there's, there was a movie that, um, uh, can't even think of his name right now. He did a movie called A Gang in Blue about the police. Mm. And I really believe that when you think about heavy cameras around city halls and schools for them not to have a, a suspect for them not to have anybody it leads me to believe that the police may be involved you know the the it's always been if i can just go to divorce just a little bit just 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 digress just for a second remember that the police department was created out of the slave catchers the white landowners, plantation owners, when the slaves were freed in 1865, knew they could not maintain their plantations. So they hired a group of men called slave catchers. Mm. And that's how our neighborhood force came about, was because of trying to keep black people suppressed, free labor. You remember when, when, when black men used to print license plates in prison? Remember that when the the laws was passed, the Constitution wasn't for black men because they say we're only three fifths of a man. So a lot of it has to do with keeping us oppressed. You know, it has to keep us in fear, has to keep us in check. Had it not been for gunpowder, had it not been for gunpowder, 
white men would have never have ruled the land. Mm-hmm. Shaka Zulu would over overrun Africa had it not been for gunpowder. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you're seeing that now. You're seeing that now with with innocent uh, teens having guns drawn on them. Um, that's that's like the go-to nowadays. I mean, look at the Trayvon Martin situation. He beat that man with his fist. Yeah. And that man couldn't yeah. take a a whooping, and right. and he pulled a gun and he used that. It's, it's, it's well, been it's been got, that. The guy that got killed in Atlanta, remember, he whooped two of them. Mm-hmm. Took his taser and was running away. Yeah, Rashard Brooks. Yes, yes. Rashard Brooks, and, and, and because of because of the fact that he embarrassed them, and I know that he probably reacted out of anger and shot him. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know, you know, you know, Pastor One. I, I definitely want to because we're gonna touch on Rashad. I definitely want to get into that. But Fed Five, the Fever just just joined us. How you feeling, my brother? I'm good, man. Just uh, had a beautiful Juneteenth celebration at you know in the Nickerson Gardens, and uh, nice. it was beautiful. A lot of uh, good turnout, even though uh, social distancing. Kenny Lattimore showed up and blessed us with two songs. Nice. Uh, J-Rock blessed us with his presence. It was just a beautiful thing. Nice, so nice. I, nice. I, ran, I ran here so that I could jump <laughs> on, so I apologize for being late. Now, we, we appreciate you, you know, for making it in, in your busy schedule, man. But, you know, we, we're talking about a, a lot of things, as usual. But uh, at, at this moment, we're talking about the hangings, right. The, right. The, the, the lynching versus suicides, whatever they're calling it. Um, but you, give us your spill on this. So, you know, we, we, we have a lot of people out here and they're getting caught up. Like me, me personally, my background is to always find the root cause of an issue, right? Mm-hmm. And most people as human beings, we, we are so impacted by the issue itself, the symptoms, right? The sim- symptomatic issues. Mm-hmm. And so we, we fail to dig deeper into the root cause. So here's the root cause, I'll give it to you. The root cause is that this is a nation. This nation was founded by degenerates, right? The the illiterates and the, de- the g- degenerates of Europe were said, hey, you guys can can run something and be in control and, ex- you know, feel, uh, ex- enjoy some of the, the privileges that the elite of Europe can enjoy if you can go over there and colonize this territory. Mm-hmm. And so, so what they did was, you know, as illiterates, uh, with gunpowder, um, what they did was something strategic, extremely strategic and unique. And that's, that, that is, they came here and built a nation using the nation building blueprint. And so when you get down into nation building and you get down to the, uh, the third, the fourth level of, of a nation, which is police, we have to understand that, hey, the police are doing their job. They are paid to uphold the laws that are created by the community that pays them. And so in order to get rid of the police and to address police brutality and everything that the police is, are doing, you have to go back to who's paying them, which are that, that wealthy, less than 0.1% of the, the population, mm. right? In order to get rid of the police officers, you have to get rid of all laws and write new ones, right. period. Hmm. You have to get rid of all laws and write new ones period. And when you do that, when you do that, what happens is every nation is built on in God we trust. And so in order to get rid of the laws that exist and write new ones, you also have to get rid of religion. And that makes a whole lot of people uncomfortable. That makes black people uncomfortable. And and if you ask black people, if they would uh, rather be subjected to these same laws, which enslave them and makes it legal to enslave them, and murder them for uh, being defiant slaves or give up their religion, a lot of them would accept slavery. Mm-hmm. And this, this, is, this is definitely gonna open up, um, I, I believe the minds of everybody. So I wanna take it back to, to Compton and Papa Compton. You know, how do you guys feel um, on, on the thoughts of, of Fed Five for the uh, I believe it's true. I believe it's true because as a culture and as a people, man, a lot of what we had as hope in, in hard times was religion. Mm-hmm. You understand? Was religion and the fact that we can believe in something. We can believe in something and at the end of the day, you couldn't judge me, you couldn't break me, you couldn't take me. Mm-hmm. And for everything to change. But Fed Five is right. You know, a change has to come completely. We yeah. won't get it 
based on somebody taking a paper and say, let's scratch this out. Let's take this out. This is unjust. This is not right. It has to be a destroy and rebuild mentality in order to get it. But in order to get that, we honestly got to take a step back and say, as a people, are we willing to unite as all and say that in order for us to get the freedom and get what we deserve in a world that takes our money, takes our lifestyle, takes our religion, takes our movement, and live day to day in a different color, but acts the exact same way, do we want to give them the permission to take everything away, destroy and rebuild and recreate it in the words of a Senate and a government that is only going to do it to benefit them in the end in the first place? Right. And I, I want to add one thing, and then I don't want to hog, but I want to add two things, actually. One is, before the laws, the Constitution was even written, slaves were given Catholicism. So they were given religion, right? Before we even, a hundred, hundred plus years before we even got to laws, you got Catholicism. That, that was forced on you, right? So that's one. Then the second thing I want to add is, we talk, he talked about uh, three-fifths of a man. The Bill of Rights, right, are the First Amendment through the Tenth Amendment, right? Those were never removed or erased. That's where the three-fifths of a man, you don't have rights, comes in. What they did was they added the 11th and 12th and 13th and all the way down to the 1 through 10, mm -hmm. right? You cannot add something that took away from exactly. you in the first place that you were not a part of. So really, the, again, the only, the only solution is to go back and start from scratch because now we have 10 amendments that says we're not citizens, so we, the laws don't apply to us, and then they added amendments to those that give us rights. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Mm. So, so, so with Pop Comp, you know, jumping back in here, um, right. what are your thoughts on this one right here? Okay, I think... Do you really think that they're at, here we are in 2020. Do you really think that they're going to actually change our laws? They might. I don't think so. They might Not willingly. Okay. Not willingly. <laughs> yes. Not willingly. Okay. Now, some of, some of our laws, they will be changed for the better for the people. I really believe in that. Since we have so many people out protesting against uh, everything now, and I really believe that some of the laws uh, will be changed for the, in, in the police force because of the police brutality that they issue on a black man, simply because that. But defunding the uh, police and everything, I think they should be defunded a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, some of, the, some, of the, uh, some of that money can go to our... Uh, so, go to our poorest parts of the city, school you know, systems. and uh, go to our school systems yeah. and everything else. But, and, you know, I, I definitely, uh, cause we, we definitely gonna touch on that. You know, that's one of the, that's one of like the right. juiciest mm -hmm. topics right there. Everybody's talking about this, <laughs> but, right. but like with the, with the matter at hand, um, I definitely want to bring in brother Terrell to, to, to the forefront of this one. Cause we're talking about religion. Now I know yeah. this brother goes out and he has uh, what we like to call fellowship with, with several members of, of this worldwide community. You know, the man's well-versed in, in several languages. Um, so he has, a, he has an opportunity to experience and embrace religions of, of all uh, uh, realms of this world. Man, how, how do you feel about removing religion um, to, to liberate the people? Um, it's, it's tough, but I mean, even when you look at religion, to me, I feel like it was one of the original politics, you know what I'm saying, upon men in general. You know what I'm saying? And if it's misinterpreted, it can definitely start wars. You know what I'm saying? You have something that's old. Because to me, when it comes to language, language is one of the oldest things on earth. Right. You know? And everything that's associated with it. So you have now, like, Jewish individuals and you have Muslim individuals. For some reason, they, they you know, they, they can't really, quote, unquote, coexist. And then even when you look further down, like within our political system right now, you have, you know what I'm saying, the left, the right, or, you know, Democratic or Republican. Like, 
me, when it comes to religion, I have nothing against, you know, those individuals who practice these things. But me personally, it's, it's more so having a religion with your heavenly father, your spiritual being, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Once you start kind of getting outside from that, then you're able to easily get distracted, you know what I'm saying? Now it's whose religion is superior over the other, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people history usually get misconstrued, you know what I'm saying? It can easily get uh, taken up out of top topic, they're extremists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, as human beings, I think our original religion as human beings was to love each other, to embrace each other on an aspect of understanding that we will have differences, you know what I'm saying? But not necessarily ridiculing us for our differences, but more so uh, communicating through our differences. Mm. I like it. I like it. I know, I know uh, Pastor Warren is in the back. He's like, remove religion. What? Um, <laughs> what's, your, what's your take on this, uh, Pop, about, about you know, what, what, what Fetty Bob just said? For, for me, you know, religion has never been what God intended. It was all about our relationship with Christ. Race mm-hmm. is something that's man-made. God only looks at the human race. All of us have the same blood, for say. But for me, the, the easiest way to, to really make a definite change is for all the people of color to come, to come together and form our own political party. It would be more simpler and easier because we would outnumber we would, with the Hispanics and the other minorities in America, we would outnumber easily the white population. And therefore, we can inform, we, we can form a party, enact our own laws, elect our own people, if in fact we want to stay a part of the current system. But we can, to, together, if we were to, to, to colonize together, we could start our own everything. Right. We wouldn't have to even deal with society if we so choose. I really believe I like- that if we take away the, 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 the premise of religion, and was, if the Bible had really been taught, it was Catholicism, it was, a, it was a means of controlling people, but that's never what God intended. And for that reason, you have all these fractions of a religion. That ba- all religions basically came from the first books of the Bible, and then men decided to do what they wanted to do as far as forming their own premises. But for, 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 for the serious side of this, it's, it's more than just a religion or a political issue. It's really about who we are as human beings. If we mm-hmm. choose to, with the uprising and all the diversity that's coming together, and now they're starting to see the lies of racism, the lies and the hypocrisy of the United States, the young white people began to see and question what they were taught. It's really about a re-education of the yes, whole absolutely. system. Yes. It's about re-education because all the lies has been told. That's why Trump can blatantly say he made Juneteenth popular. This has been celebrated for 99 years, and now you, you have white people saying, I never heard of it. Why did you never hear of it? Because we had an educational system that refused to teach black history. The only thing they wanted to tell you is that we were subservient and we were slaves. They don't want to tell you that we came from kings. They right. want to tell you that they raped the African nation of all its resources and that the Europeans divided it up amongst themselves right. because they had gunpowder. Had it not been for gunpowder, exactly. Africa would have never been divided. Right. Yeah. It would have never happened. You know, I mean, I, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry, son. I was going to say, I, I love it. I like where we are. You already know what we got to do. <laughs> we got to really back in. We're going to take a quick break for everybody listening out there. I know your minds are probably spinning. You probably need some water to rehydrate your brain because I know I do. Um, We're going to take a quick break, get to a couple songs, and sounds like radio to any spot. Don't you go nowhere because we will be right back. We are back. We are back in the building. I'm excited. This this is a nice one. This is a nice one. And and the way we we left off, we had to take a break. But, I mean, we're talking about educating a culture, cultural education, not not, – not something you get in public school. This is something that you get in home. Uh, social media probably could teach you. Um, you know, uh, a nice butt whooping probably teach you. But uh, we're talking about doing it in home. And I, I'm going to turn the tables back to Pastor Warren. Uh, just continue us off where we were uh, before we took a break. And so what I was saying about the educational side of it, the re-education of America. And, you know, the social distancing thing has its advantages. Being at home right now has a great advantage and, and also a challenge. But that we have social media now, and we can really do it through simple media. 
That is that those who are serious about changing this country, serious about making something lasting and not just marching, not just a riot, but have a s systemic plan. Like 55 was saying, there's a, there's a five tier level to creating a nation, to understand the concept of how you do it. Because if you don't get rid of that 5% that controls everything, those who have the money buy off everybody so that they can continue to stay in power, you're gonna always have this issue. It's gonna always be us against them because the rich don't care nothing about the poor. History bears that out. The rich don't really care about the poor. They'll, do, they'll give you social programs as long as they can control it. They'll give you, they'll give you welfare. They'll give you health care. They'll give you anything that you can keep your mouth shut. They'll give you, they'll feed you so long as they can control what they're feeding you. Yeah. They control the media. The media is controlled. Trump keeps talking about the fake news. Level five, that's level five. Uh, it's only fake if it's coming against me. Right. <laughs> I got to create my own narrative. I got to make you see me. Yep. I got to make you see me above what you think of me. Mm. So if I can tell you a lie to get you to, and, and the cold part about, about what's going on right now, the lies are being exposed, and you got people who still got a blind eye to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you see, you see this with, with the Fox versus CNN. I, I love watching both of those uh, right. networks because they are so against each other, and it is so right. obvious who's for who. Um, and they, they always give somebody an opportunity, but as soon as it starts getting good and they start making sense, oh, we got to cut you out and go to something else. That's it. it, it's, it it's so, so I see it. I definitely see it. Level um, five. Level, like, that's, like five is saying level five. <laughs> so, level so five, media gentlemen, control. Uh, brother, brother Sly uh, has joined, you know, the, the dialogue. So I want to welcome him well, into what the, up? To the group. How you feeling, man? What do you do? <laughs> man, I'm good, man. I just got off work, man. I'm blessed to still be working. You know what I'm saying? I see, I see a uh, Compton's pops in there. Uh, he's a, he's the brother that's always said, man, you always got a job. How you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're always working, You're always working yeah. man. I always got a hustle. I got two hustles right now, man. I'm getting two paychecks, so it is what it is, pops. That's good. But hey, good. um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in, man, on 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 the current state of of the way things are, man. Happy Juneteenth, by the way, everybody. Happy Juneteenth, brother. I, I, Juneteenth. I know I'm, I'm I'm late to the party, man, but um, let me get out the, that out the way. So happy Juneteenth, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And um um, just to reflect on. The, the current situation, man, the current status of, of everything that's going on as a whole, um, especially, you know what I'm saying, like like uh, 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 Papa Warren was saying, you know what I mean, uh, with the media you know, and all the control, it's it's really, it's, it's, it's a lot deeper than, than when it's just the media, you know what I'm saying, it's a, a lot of it's systemic because the media is just the fourth branch of the government, you know what I'm saying, you know how they say they got three branches, well, the media is the fourth branch, you know what I mean, um, I don't know if you guys read a lot, but uh, I read a book back in high school, man, called uh, 1984 by George Orwell. And uh, in the book, 1984, it basically explains, man, how this guy, okay, so the book was written in 1948, right? Yep. So, and this was his prediction of the future. Uh, and he named it 1984 because he predicted that, that um, TVs will be able to watch us and see what we're doing. Right. Okay. And everything will be controlled by by three systems. Right. And all the countries will be united. Right. Into to three large countries. And and all the all the media, all the propaganda has to get ciphered through one source before it reaches the people. You know what I mean? And every day, man, every day. Ever since I read that book, it's becoming more of that way. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as. The way things are today. And it's it's crazy, man. Like uh, just the 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 amount of fake news that I see on Facebook, you know. Like for instance, um, there's a uh, fake news. Yeah, the fake news. You know what I'm saying? But but the the people that are posting the fake news are the people. The people post the fake news more than the media, because right. in social media days, we are the media. We don't have to watch CNN or Fox to get our news anymore. I can. I can subscribe straight to the journalists on Twitter if I wanted to, you know what I mean? Without, without having to go through the filter, you know what I mean? Right. But right. at the same time, a lot of fake news is posted by the people too as well. And uh, one of the biggest fake articles was, um, so the, the whole Anjamama thing, right? With uh, the, the syrup. That is, right? that is definitely a hot topic. <laughs> it's a hot topic right now, right? Yeah. So Anjamama, right? So there's, a, there's an article going around online that uh, she died a millionaire. 
right? Like, oh, she 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 was so successful, this, that, and the other, right? The truth is, she died poor. She died poor, still working in the kitchen. And and she was literally exploited for the benefit of white corporations. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to necessarily say white, but I'm saying non-black corporations. You know what I mean? White. She didn't – her image was still used to this day up until the other day, and mm-hmm. her family never made a dime off that. Mm-hmm. Ever. And, you know what I mean? You know what? So, I want to so I want to I want to bring Brother Terrell into, into okay. the, to, to, to the conversation. I, I see him shaking his head, and he's like <laughs> – it's like playing double dutch. How do I get in? You know, jump on in here, brother, because um, this is something that you and I just talked about a couple of days ago, um, as far as the media goes. You know, so give us your thoughts on this. Um, no, nah, I agree. I agree big time. Um, the media, to me, I feel like you know, like they said, it's part of the the judicial system. It's part of the justice system, big time. It's 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 working against us. It's it's always has been. You know what I'm saying? Whoever they want to point as enemy number one, they'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Like for blacks, it's been going on for decades, centuries, millenniums. You know what I'm saying? Even if you go to reading books back in the day, they 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 paint something that's negative. That's how tabloid junkies work. You know what I'm saying? And as we I don't know. For me, I look at it as now this was the first time in a very long time that I was seeing black people being very progressive. You know what I'm saying? You got attorneys, you know what I'm saying? You got judges, you got a lot of, you know, small business owners and things like that. And, you know, in a sense, what they try to do is they try to, you know, kind of monger us into these violent or, you know, malicious acts to show like, hey, see, they ain't really progress. Like that's why we kind of at a point of this pity party per se and i'm not saying that i don't appreciate the help that everybody's trying to put forth but i feel like i use the black lives matter it's politicized now you know yes. what i'm saying it's right. it, it's now becoming a, a pity party to where people are like oh look what we're doing for the community now look what we're doing and the thing is is we could be receiving all this money and i'm okay with that but what's the solution what's next like what what, what are we coming up with with all this allocation of cash to be able yeah. to fund yeah. fund our community. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what what are the next steps? And we got to kind of not voice what we're going to do because I feel like as a community, we tell everybody our next moves. And, you know, right. once we do that, once we do that, the media can easily come in and stir things up, you know? And in addition to that, you know, me, I don't follow really so much as the media. I, I don't look left or right. I look straight through. And right. in a sense, when Trump say fake news, he, you know, he, he kind of got a valid point. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just only fake news on him. It's fake news upon us. You know what I'm saying? You have peaceful protesters, and they want to highlight the looting. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? They, they, they want to highlight the destruction as, instead of, you know, showing... The, the, the prosperous acts that we have, you know, been demonstrating for the last, you know, what, what is that, six months? Like 30, 45, 55 years now? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like we, we're, we're past that, that civil rights movement. It's like here and now, what we truly want is equality and justice. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where we can really start making changes once we're treated as equal. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, yeah, we all originate from Africa, but our ancestors built this country. So we are just as about as American as everybody else. Before, you know, I, you know I, I, I dig that. I dig that. And, right. and, and you, you touched on something, uh, that Brother Tino, as far as, far as you, you know, you're speaking on um, what we like to call, you know, uh, urban economic development, you know, buying back our communities and, 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 and all the good stuff. But the Aunt Jemima situation, a lot of people didn't notice you wasn't a black owned company. You got kids out there, that's the only syrup I'm gonna drink. You got a black woman on it, but that's what they've been doing. Murray's Pomad is, isn't even black owned. You know what right. I mean? Your, your Cantu um, shea butter creams and, and leave in conditioners, those aren't even black owned. So with that being said, uh, Fed Five, you know, you you really talked about this last, uh, the last conversation we had. I know we had to cut it short. So I wanna bring that into it. Give me your thoughts on Aunt Jemima. I hope I'm saying the name right. It don't even matter at this point because yeah. you know, we're bamboozled. Yeah. Yeah. But, Whatever her name is, right? <laughs> Whatever name they gave her, it, it mean, wasn't how do, her. How do we? How do we? How do we rebuild? And why are we looking at buying other land? Why not take back the communities we already uh, are dominant in? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Cool. 
So uh, the whole ancient mama thing is, it speaks to, again, the, the root cause of this, this problem, right? I have a piece that I just did, just rolled it out. This is the first time I performed it. It's called Black Black. And ultimately, it says that don't disrespect me by calling me a minority because I'm black. And matter of fact, I'm not just black, I'm black, black, right? And it goes into all, everything that's been done to us. When you pull, when blacks want equality, and we talk about equality and we want to be mixed in with every other minority, we throw away all of our ancestors' hard work and we throw away something more valuable than that. And that's the fact that every other minority and every other community in this world is in debt to the United States, except for the African. The African doesn't owe the United States anything. He's never sold in and contracted with the United States to be in debt. If anything, the United States owes the African. Right. The United States owes the African for free labor, but it also owes the African for everything that it stole from Africa when it took the African, right? right? And so if we, as long as we go out and we protest to be equal, they're going to entertain that because it doesn't get to the root cause. And the root cause is they owe, uh, we're the only group of people that they owe, that they're in debt to. Not China, not D Japan, not Iraq, not Afghanistan, no one. They, they're in debt to us. And right, so that, media, that was all business. Right. And the, the media has to be used to convince us that one, we're the problem and to distract us too from the fact that they owe us, they're in debt to us. Mm -hmm. And that prevents us from going to collect. Right now is the time in which we should go and collect because they're writing checks. But those right. checks that they're writing with no plan is all in vain. And it, that really spits on our ancestors by accepting these checks. And the fact that, that nothing against Black Lives Matter uh, what they're doing from a political perspective is great, but the fact that Rainbow Coalition, NAACP, uh, Al Sharpton's organization, and now Black Lives Matter has been the representative for black folks and they've gotten paid, right? Uh, I don't want to be in debt behind them. I want my debt paid to me. I want my debt paid to into a system that benefits me and my generations down the line. And my, me and my people's generations down the line. I don't want to be in debt on 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 the, the, the coattails of Black Lives Matter and Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and all those that came before them. I don't want it. I don't want that. And so they they owe us a debt, and we need to go and collect, like like anybody else that's going to come and collect the debt from you. You go and you get your your money. Got it. So so I, I see I see Pastor Warren. He's he's like, hey, let me let me jump in there. So so give us give us your thoughts. I mean. How are you feeling about this? You know, what, when we deal with, with, with media and, and the perception, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, they try to talk about his past to try to demonize him before the trial. James Brown says something back in, in, in the early 70s. He says, he says, I don't want nobody to give me no help. Just open the door. I'll get it myself. Hmm. We're asking for a level playing field, not equality but a, lane, a, lay, a, a level playing field, meaning that we've been owed the 40 acres and a mule way back when great granddaddy and walked off their plantations. They are indebted to us, but what we have as, 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 as a culture of black people is a trillion dollar a year industry. Mm -hmm. If we take that money and invest in ourselves, if we, if we tell them, all we want you to do is leave us alone. Mm -hmm. Leave us alone. G give us a quarter of this country. Give us, give, give us Montana. G give us, you know, what we got. I don't know about Montana. That's, that's <laughs> give us. Uh, yeah, I don't give Montana. <laughs> give, give, give us West Virginia. Well, give give us some place where it's gonna be warm, man. Give us, give, give us, <laughs> give us Alabama. <laughs> You know, give give us Alabama, man. Give Georgia. us, give, give, yeah, that's cool. Give, know, us, give us some Georgia land. All I'm trying to say is, we leave. You know, give us the space yeah. that we need to yeah. recreate who we are. Let yeah. it watch and see that we will rebuild. We have enough educated black people now, yeah. young black people, brilliant minds, but we can rebuild our own whatever we want to call it. Right, right. Yeah. We have enough finances 
fight. Do, we don't tell. I tell you what. Don't give us rip reparations. Make us tax free. Yes, that's yeah. it. Make us tax free. Nah, but then then if they don't I mean, give you the job, it don't matter. Listen right? to me. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let us be tax free, okay? But watch this. But allow us the resources we need, the materials. Exactly. Like we built your country, let us build our nation. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and then, and then, once we have our nation up and running, if we choose to do business with you, we can do business with you. But because you owe us, all of us collectively, you can you can count up the, the what however million black folk it is, and and put that into forty acres per person. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Cut us off a fourth for the land. Right. Give us Nevada. <laughs> no, I don't want that either. Give me somewhere. Give me West Virginia or, or Georgia or something. Give us, hey, where, where, you, where, you we can, where we can agree, agree upon it. What I'm trying to get at is yeah. if they just leave us alone. Right, right. I got you. Well, you know Take what? Take the police out. You, we'll you police what I, ourselves. You know what no, I was that's, thinking, that's, though? That's it. I was thinking that when you, if you look at it, they came and violently took yeah. us and our yeah. stuff from, sure. from Africa, right? It's always been violent. Yeah. Right. So then they came and violently yeah. removed the people that were here. Some of us were already here. They removed us too. Then they violently forced us to build their country. Yeah. And now, and then since then, they violently uh, put us in our places. So why are we, why do we believe that we can go and ask and they going to give it to us? It's only going to come one way. This time around, this time around, it's not. I agree with you, brother. It's, right. it's it's only one way. You're gonna have to violently. I we're gonna have to you. collectively decide which piece of land we want, and we're right. gonna have to violently take it. Right. Well, let me let me share that. You know, you you're on a good point, son. And and I and I'll tell you. Whoo, got my got my blood going. But like they did, <laughs> like they like they like they did in Seattle, like these people, like they have done in Seattle. But they made it a, a diverse exactly. five blocks. Exactly. They made a diverse five blocks. I understand that the point of, of, of taking, but the only reason, the only reason I'm hesitant is because they have tanks and they have airplanes. Mm -hmm. No. And, and if in fact, hold on, but if, if in fact it becomes too aggressive, like they did in Tulsa, they will not hesitate to drop bombs on us. So right now, hesitate. right now that kind of went out the window. Think, because if you wage war on the state, the feds are not supposed to get involved per the Eleventh Amendment. Right. Mm -hmm. But you got a Trump who don't yeah. he don't who don't go by nobody law. He, 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 he's not, he's not he, don't control, he don't control the Secretary of State, which right. is, is but, what but, we just but saw. He's not, they will, he's not following the amendments either I, at the same time. Right. But he'll he'll get popped. He'll get popped for telling the military they need to go and fight a state's war. That's disrespectful right. to, exactly. to the military. And that's why so, you have that general. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that general the next day or two come up and apologize to the American people. Yep. About doing something that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Exactly. Yeah, so if if the if blacks collectively got together and said, "Hey, you know what? Um, Maryland, right? Maryland, we taking Maryland," and, and collectively went and and said, "Hey, governor, give it up," right? Is no one he can call except for the police. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it. He can but, call but, the but state the police. About that, though. Hey, yeah. He can call the state police. That's it. It ain't enough. You know, you know what? They can call in the National Guard, though. That's that's no, what they're. That's no, what they're the National they're Guard has come with the permission of the general. The, the general is not the, per the Eleventh Amendment. The feds are not supposed to get involved with state issues and fight a state's war. That's their right. own right. personal problem, unless they pay they for it. They wouldn't have the power. Unless they, they pay for it. Now you can pay. You can pay the federal government, uh, the salaries of the military to come in and help you fight your war. That's not going to happen because the same black people that pay the taxes, that's overturning you. But then why is it that the, that, the, that, the, that the, hold on, but why is it then that the, whenever there's a riot, you can call a National Guard to come in? And the reason why the, the reason why the National Guard was, this is how, this is how we got played. The National Guard was there and involved in the protest because they were deployed during a uh, national emergency for COVID. So they were already there. Right. We got took. Right. They were there for COVID, not for protest. Wow. 
Or, or whatever those are, or, they're always called in. That's what I'm asking. Or no, nah, the SWAT team. Or, or the maybe, National Guard is not supposed to participate. No, nah, the, the, the National Guard does come in because the, uh, I, I remember the, the LA riots in 92, the National Guard was there too. So, the National Guard came in right. not because of the riots. They came in because of the fires and the, the emergencies, right. right? The governor has to declare, the mayor has to declare a city of emergency. Emer yeah. The governor state declares emergency. a state of emergency, and okay. then they have to access uh, emergency right. resources. The National Guard brings in resources. There was no food. There were there was water. They cut the electricity off. They had all these other emergency issues. That's how they get the National Guards here. They they're not supposed to come to your state and fight a war. No. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know what's right. interesting? Legally, uh, legally. I I want to say the irony behind you know uh, ninety two was Rodney King. Yeah, yeah. That so happened to ironically be a voting year. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just I, I see the patterns of yeah. racial injustices yeah. always during voting years, and it's always publicized. You know what I'm saying? And it, it I don't know. I just feel like we we get suckered every time, and then boom, we we, we go right after we. We're we being suckered right now. <laughs> yep. well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If if, if if we we take it back to politics, man, no no matter what, who we're voting for. I mean, even though Bill Clinton was supposedly on our side, he, him and, and Joe Biden and, no. you know, all, all these other dudes wrote the crime bill, the 1994 crime bill. You there, know what I'm saying? There, because after the right. riots, after the riots, we voted in Clinton, right? right. Because we, we wanted some sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of uh, leverage or whatever. Well, but look, he look, fucked look. around and, and fucked us too. So look, look, this is what I wanted to bring awareness to. In a sense... I, I like I, I'm no involved with any politics whatsoever. Like I said, I try to see things through. I'm happy that Trump tweets 24/7 in a sense yeah, sure. because this 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 is the first time that we've had as a people involvement with everything that's going on in the White yeah, House right. and, and like all the information we've we've been deprived of. You know, what I'm saying no president has been oh, like everybody. Don't get me wrong. If it was up to me, I'd tell him, shut the fuck up. Like, let, let, let's just be real. <laughs> but in actuality, like, because he is talking a lot, he's exposing everybody. Now, mind you, he's been at that table for the last 58 years, minimum. You know what I'm saying? This dude is 73 years old. So he's been at that table. He's been a multi-millionaire billionaire for a year. So he know a lot of dirt about a lot of those individuals. So because of we being exposed to all that stuff, now we're starting to wake up as people. Like, yeah, there are certain people, you know well, what I'm saying, you lean to the water, and you know what I'm saying, they still not taking a sip, but at least now, it's a conversation that all of us are having, and it, it's transcended to other countries. You know what I'm saying? Even though the sideshow is Trump, what I try to do is, I, I try to step out of that realm and look at it outside looking in like, hmm, this is our time to strategize. Yes, sir. I got a question. Anybody that we get into the office right now, man, and I'm going to be honest, and I want you to be honest as well, and anybody that's listening can take it how they want to take it. Yeah. Anybody that we get in the office at this point in time that's 60 to 70 plus, do you think they care about you? <laughs> yeah, not at all. Not at all. I, wasn't, I wasn't all on board with the whole Biden thing and all of this. It, it, <laughs> I'm with Pastor Warren. <laughs> 100%. I'm going to speak my mind on it, and I hope that the black community agrees with what I'm saying, because I think if we want to do it, we don't have to be nonpartisan. We we can start our own party that votes I agree. who we want for, and 100% of the time, we will win, because our I agree. are making the movements but it's on us to go out there day to day. It's on us to speak to everybody and make sure that everybody votes mm -hmm. and right. be a part of this. But until we start our own party and be realistic with ourselves, be yeah, realistic. Like, with ourselves. Accountability. Let me just throw this at you, man. The Tea Party everything. started. But remember the Tea Party started. The Tea Party started in one year. In one year. Because they didn't like what the Republican Party was doing. But when they got Trump, they backed off mm -hmm. because he, he he matched their agenda. Yeah. It won't take long. After this after this election, you guys are young enough. You guys are articulate enough. You guys have enough network and connections to really galvanize, to really galvanize people of color, to start Absolutely. a social change. 
Yeah, yeah. Because, with, because, with, because with the plan, if, if you have a plan, if you have a plan beyond the rise, beyond the looting, beyond the march for Black Lives Matter, beyond the inclusion, it, but if you have a plan, yeah, that's that's what I want to definitely to, to change. You can, you guys can change the dynamics for mm -hmm. the future. Man, you guys have the power. You have the wisdom. You have the social outlets. You guys can galvanize all the way to Europe. Absolutely, that's, I think, I think, that's I think, Japan. Think, think, you know think, think, think about, about everything. Think, ahead, think about this, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor resigns. Now she's the youngest uh, uh, Secretary of State for Legislative uh, uh, Affairs ever, right? The first Black woman. Mm -hmm. in that position. So we're talking about political power. Yeah. There's your example right there. She's 30 years old, yeah. making those type of moves, and, and, and felt confident, felt offended enough right, at right. the same time to yeah. step down from yeah. the position when she yeah. backed this man for years. Was so yeah. key in a lot of the moves that he made and bringing people into certain roles, you know, being somewhat of an, an advisor at times. Um, there's your political party right there, man. So, so Fed Five, jump in here, because I know that you was uh, starting to disagree with, with some of the things that were said. I would love to hear your take on it. Well, again, politicians are owned. So if you're not controlling the economics, I mean, you know, go through the five, the five levels, right? Level one, you got community. The people coming together, they have a common set of goals. Level two, you control the territory and the resources. Mm -hmm. Level three, you put a group in place that's going to be responsible for drafting laws, mm -hmm. right? Level four, you get politicians and police officers and judges in place to uphold those laws. Mm -hmm. Those laws based upon what you value. Mm -hmm. And then five, you produce media and content and school systems and things that teach people what you want them to believe and hold to heart. Mm -hmm. Those are the five levels. So if you go to politics, politicians, politicians are already on three, three ways down. Right. So if you do something, you know, that the community doesn't care for, does not uphold the laws that they put in place, or you talk about changing their laws, they take you out and get somebody else. But that's why, why there's always a contingency plan. Huh? That's why you have to create your own party. But in, in order to, to create your, the parties you don't create, create the laws. You have to create your own community, well, your own you nation. You got to build your own nation. Saying. I got what you're saying. But if you, but you, if you elect somebody who has your values, right? Right. Right. You elect somebody who, ha who has your point of view. That's your community. That's when you start enacting laws that portray your point of view. Then you don't. You, but if you don't have territory and control the resources, those laws don't matter. But you're gonna. But you, that's how you get to that point. Because remember, they can. They always drew. They always back up the line or expand the line. It's gonna be always a divide so, the country. Yeah. I, I I totally agree with, with, with Pastor Ward on that, man. Because. The same, the same thing we were talking about last week. We have black people are always trying to chase the money when we should be chasing the power first. Because so when we that's talk what about, separates us from... But when you talk about economics, economics is the power. The person controlling the politician is who has the power, not the politician. But listen to me. That's, that's where, we, that's where we, we're missing each other. Because if you, if, you, if you elect the person who write the laws, who cuts the check, they got the money. But the laws you can, you are can, written by the people that are written by the community. That's the, all right, that's what I'm saying. You you elect your community, though. You you can't elect the community. You got to start over. That's scratch. That's step one. <laughs> like, but that's what I, that's what I'm trying to get at. Can't if go we from come together four to one. If we come together with all these with all those that's been marching, with all those men that's been marching, we come together, and we we elect our leaders. We elect our brain trust, and our brain trust now controls the money. But then you, you have to go and take. Money. You have to but go and take this. over somebody's but nation. This. But what's but once you come in, once you're empowered, then you can take the land, just like they just like they did redlining. Well, now we go redline. We gonna take all of Maryland and all of West Virginia. But you gotta you gotta remember. All right, so then you're telling you're telling a politician to to go in and change the laws. He's under the laws, and so he can't, to me. He doesn't do, he they, doesn't write they laws. Do it all he the enforces time. them. But they no, do it they all don't. Time. Politicians don't write laws. They no. enforce them. They, 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 they draft. What, what, do they, what do they meet no. on? They so, don't. So, so politicians, politicians enforce laws. Politicians basically uh, put forth legislation. And then, and then the Senate That's and the, the House have to have to vote on the legislation for it to become That's law. It. Right? No. And then and if, if, if the law, if the president decides he doesn't want the, the law to be, he can veto it. 
if, if so, it's a bill or whatever. You know what I mean? So, so there, so there a, is a process. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Nobody on this. Has anybody watched Schoolhouse Rock at least? <laughs> wow. yeah. In a long time, brother. Right? We, we the know, community. We know, we know the branches of government. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Wait a minute. The, the community, the community drafts the law and they get signatures. Right. They hand it to their politician and then it's voted on in the branches of government. The community drafts the law and votes on it with signatures, and then they hand it to the politician and say, hey, run this down there and make sure right. the Senate, Congress, and the House vote on it. But the community is also the one The community exactly. drafts the laws. So that's, that's, so that's my point that's exactly. That's the point right as well. That's the the but, community, but it's, the it's, people. The people it's, that it's, own. It's, it's the executive who point. says what becomes law or not. No, it's not. No. It gives so then, I saw that if I'm president, I can't veto a legislation that you put forward. You you can't veto nothing because as the community whose signatures wrote this law, they gave it to you and told you to make it happen. Your clock ticking, and if right. you don't make this happen, I mean, we yeah. gonna get rid of you. You are gonna get executed. Exactly. And we gonna put somebody in your seat that can make this happen. Exactly. That's how it works. That's what I'm talking about when I say the community. Remember, we got all this. We got all this energy right now. Mm -hmm. We got all this energy right now. All this energy can elect somebody who can get no, that legislation. It's not election. It's not election. Listen to me. The community drafts, community says this is what we need, right? But the we need somebody who, listen The community to me, is already, it already has its citizens. We can't start another community. We have no, to start to a me. new nation. Listen to me. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> if we, if we, if we got the, if we got the energy and the momentum right now, right? And this is, they're saying, we don't want you to lose. We don't want you riding. What do you want? We come up with a plan. This is what we want. This right. is what we they want. Gonna, give that, give that to down. those who are, give that to our, our legislative branch. This is what we want. That's what he said. So what, so, come on. Yes. So, far, what you, so far, what you were saying, this is exactly what Pastor Warren's explaining. Your, mm -hmm. your, your exact strategy is what he's explaining. It starts with the community. So he's saying, get the community. Once we have, and we have, we have the numbers to have the community. So here's the part the that's being missed. The community has to start from scratch because the community that already exists is in That's opposition. That's where we started from. Hold on, That's wait a minute. This, from. This, so this, then we're missing a step. So then we have been, to, we have to kill community the uprising, community though. that exists and then start a new community. So yeah, that's the part that's missed. There's been a community uprise, man. I don't know if you've been watching the news, brother, or been in the yeah. streets. But I just had a yeah. Chinese dude give me a high five. I've never met this dude in my life. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of awesome to see this happen. You know? <laughs> but ties are changing. Ties are changing. Right. So the community's there. We um I, I honestly I would say Biden Biden isn't the fix. Biden's no. not the fix. No. Is no. he is he a start? Yeah. No, he's not a start. Well, this he's is a boomerang. No, he's no. a boomerang. He's I, he's a I, he's a better he's a better re a resolution than yes. what we have already. Yeah, I, I, I think so far, far that's so far sure. uh, well, I think he has the momentum. <laughs> I think yeah, it's regardless. because of the opposition. Look, I'm gonna be straight up and I want this to be because this is recorded. Okay. <laughs> Biden is a better situation than what we have right. till he's not. Well, I, I'm saying, po potential. He my choice, po potential. But he's a better choice. Potential, better. because that same community drafts those laws that he has to take to his folks. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. But we're not, we're we're some we're past, man, that I don't necessarily agree with. But we got to take what he's done already. Never mind that, because what Trump is already doing and has the potential to do. But what America did was they let the devil in, and now we got to deal with it. But yeah. for black people, we've been dealing with struggles for a long time. For 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 us, for us, what Trump is doing is showing that. What they can show on the news as us looking like angry, aggressive black people all the time and our right. face automatically speaks evil. Well, now we got a new face and it's orange. So your fault. So we gave you somebody, you gave yourself somebody to be disgraced by because it's a lot of good stuff that we do on a day to day basis, but they never going to show no. what we do right. for the community, for the world, for the people, for anything until now. And that's only because we got the backing of a lot of other cultures right. and because of social media and it was able to show what the hell was going on. But I'm going to tell you what, the protesting stopped the orange man from showing up on your television every day. That's the media taking away the white man from your vision of disgrace. <laughs> mm. 
That's allowing them a yeah. moment to say, you know what, we made a mistake when we voted this ass in. But look, they looting. Yep. They looting again. We getting them back on television. And, and you know the crazy part is it's, it's been a week ever since the I think looting started stopped right. It yeah. ain't, ain't really been a lot of looting. There's been a lot of uh, I I didn't see documentaries of black folks protecting the, the neighborhoods, especially out in Minneapolis right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they didn't took over Seattle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this is what I'm talking they about. They didn't took over now, Seattle. Now, if you look, I'm like Squeeze. I watch I watch CNN and I watch Fox News. Right? If you watch Fox News. The only thing they're going to show all day is Seattle. And if you watch CNN, CNN is going to tell you all this dirt that Trump has been doing, but you'll never hear it on Fox News. You know, it's always, yeah. they always got a, you know, their agenda. It's not a positive yeah. thing, but it's, it's sort of what they'll do. They'll keep you on Seattle <laughs> until it dies, you know, I'm telling you. So what? Well, what it's, it's, it's the, the, the Fox News, the Republicans are scared of what's happening in Seattle because it's out of their control now. You know okay. what I'm saying? What the people in Seattle are doing is exactly what we were talking about just a moment ago. Right. They, they, they sectioned right. off a part of the city, right? right. And, 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 and it's, now it's their own sovereign land. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and technically, as, 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 in accordance to the, the Constitution, they can legally do that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what we were just talking about. Yeah. So, but the difference is they're doing it not the not the way that they assume that it would happen, right? Because Republicans think people on the left, on the left side of politics, aren't armed. They they, they believe we're not armed. Right. And Seattle is showing the exact opposite. We are armed, <laughs> right? right? And right. we're willing to enforce our law because we're mm -hmm. armed. Sure. Right. So now, of course, Fox News is going to blast that because they want to stir war. They're right. gonna they're gonna get the people involved to the point where okay well if this group of, of, of people started their own militia they they whatever we can we can stir up the pot to get the people not the military because illegally they can't but they can stir the pot up to get the people to go and take it back and that's that's exactly what i mean by community right when you talk about community the community as it stands are is the wealthy that small percentage of wealthy that's the community the people are are pissed off Right. And so ultimately what has to happen for what Pastor Warren and what you guys were talking about is that the people have to overthrow the community so that the people take control of the power. Sure. Then you can get change. But well, it's not this. gonna come by with a an ask and they're not gonna hand it over. Well, so you gotta this. take it. Watch this. Just just like we are talking about right now, right? So we're talking about a trillion dollars that 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 black Americans have, right? What if we take our money with those my, with, 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 the, with, the, with the diverse people that are willing to work with us. And we start our own stores. We go, we go and, and get our own stuff. We start investing our money together, taking it away from corporate America. Mm -hmm. We can take That's, it away from them. That, and, but that would we take can, this. We can, watch this. We can work their jobs. I agree. They can tax, and they can tax us, right? I agree. We don't have to spend money with them. I agree. We have to spend money with them. They're, I agree. Just like, just like, just like America does business with China and Korea mm -hmm. and Japan, mm -hmm. we can do business with China, Korea, and Japan. Because now with the internet, you can go online. You ain't got to go to the store and buy clothes. No. You can go online. No. But you can go online and shoes now. If you think about it, about furniture. If you think so about it, this? the trade thing, the trade thing was to prevent that from happening. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Think, think about it this it. way. Think about it this way, because right now, right, what we're talking about right now is starting over, right? So yeah. if we were to start over in this country, then that means that the African man will go and take over the plantation. The African, by taking over the plantation, you start from scratch, right? So the African man and his, his associates and peers have the opportunity to rebuild a nation. He goes to the China man who has a grudge with the U.S. too. What? He goes what? to the yeah, Korean yeah. man who has, has a grudge with the U.S. too. And they work together. They work that's together it. to found a new nation. So you right on, but it still has to start with something that we all are uncomfortable with doing, uh, and that's wow. civil war, violence. Hey. And that's, you know, this is, uh, I, I got to jump in. I don't know if you have to be violent this time, though. I don't see it. I don't see <laughs> where it has to be violent this time. 
we we go we go take a step back. There's no other other way I can say it because this is getting good. It's getting great, and uh, everybody out there tuned in. Don't you go nowhere because uh, we have to tell in, but there's still some things we got to talk about. Um, and I kind of wanna, I wanted to end where we were, where we were, but I have a feeling it was gonna run for a little bit longer. So I want to take a step back. We can come back, finish this off, and then get into something that uh, everybody's thinking about talking about. And we we definitely got to speak on it. Sounds tight, ready for any spot. Don't you go nowhere. We will be right. We are back in the building. I mean, um, we're talking about it all, people. Um, and there's there's still so much more, so much further that we can go with this. But we can only give you so much in in, in the allotted time. Well, not the allotted time, but in the time designated um, for for this dialogue, for for this we are one uh, conversation. Um, I want to open this up right now. Um, we will be having multiple dialogue sessions, multiple episodes. If you are willing and ready to participate, um, definitely hit us up. We will, we will get you on the roster, get you on the list, um, and get you on, because everybody needs to have, have their voices heard. Um, there's a lot of protesters out there who are chanting and chanting and yelling and yelling, coming home, and their voices are gone, but nobody knows what they've even said. Right. It's not getting past exactly. the people that they're amongst. So let this be your platform. This is for you. This is why we're here. This is why we are one. Um, I want to jump back into the conversation we were having you know, about community and about how we elevate and how we build. And Fed Five, I, I, I'm going to call him Dr. Fetty now. Um, the man the man is well-versed in when, when, when it comes down to our Bill of Rights, our constitutional rights. A lot of people read it, but I think their interpretation um, is, is incorrect at times, right? Maybe they just don't understand. It's like reading the Bible. You actually need that pastor to tell you what these verses mean. Because if you take it your own way, you might misinterpret what the message is. And now you're living um, outside of the intent. So with that being said, Dr. 35, <laughs> bring us back into this conversation. So, you know, we were talking about how we get to a point of reconciliation as one blacks, but also as a diverse, a real true um, America, diverse American community by embracing our Asian and Central and South American brothers and sisters as well and making this a Pan-African global uh, situation. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, I don't think that the people, the powers that be are going to want to be willing to get that up, you know, right. without a fight. Uh, and so that's kind of where we are. The youth, the youth of today are far more, um, I'm not going to say far more, but they, they are very uh, much so more aggressive than what we saw in the 60s. Right. They're aggressive. They understand that, hey, in the 60s, you went up to have a peaceful protest and they sick the dogs on you. You got the water hose and they, they ran you over with cars. They beat you up through you in a, in, a, in a wagon and then took you to the prison and paid other black inmates to harass and assault you. If you were a woman, they put you in a cell with black black inmates and told them if they didn't rape you. Right they were going to do something to the inmates. And so what happened? The black man raped this woman. That was out mm. peacefully protesting, right? right. The black, a, black, a black inmate went and, and beat a, a man's half to death, like to where he lost his vision or his ability to walk because for peaceful protesting. And the youth of today, are they not having it. So right. they're going out there ready. Hey, the minute they show up and they, they in the, if they're in full riot war gear, then it's no longer a peaceful protest. Mm. And and that's that's the benefit of what we saw over the past couple of weeks, right. and uh, with a plan like we discussed earlier, in that type of aggression, uh, I believe that we will be able to take at least a few steps forward. So so with that being said, do you, and and this I'm I'm just I'm, I'm addressing the group in this one, and we all just jump in. Um, in terms of the juiciest topic, uh, I guess in the nation right now, defunding the police, does that play? Uh, a big, significant, minor, what role does that play in, in all of this? A huge one. Well, it, I, it I'll say it. this. The money that they're taking away from the police was taken from the community and given to the police in the right. first place. Exactly. So yeah. they're just giving back money yeah. that the, that was that already belonged that to the community. It was owed. Yeah. It was already owed. Yeah, well, it was, it was the money that was in the community. They took it and gave it to the police. So yeah. now they're giving it back. So organizations like Kush can now, you know, I go back and say, hey, can we get our money back so that we can resume right. doing what we were doing, right? I think, I think that money will go well, too, as far as our schools that we have in, in, uh, yeah. in our community, 
you know, you tell us that the schools are so much better here and there, and they might be, because guess what? You done took all the money that goes for our schools, and the, our kids are reading these old books and everything, and that's why we're Sharing behind books. so much. Sharing books. You know? It's, 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 it, just to speak on that same subject, man, it's, it's crazy how defund the police is a radical idea, but defunding education isn't. You know what right. I'm saying? And they've been doing that for years. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so say that. It's 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 just something that I think that it's it's going to come full circle, and the people are waking up, and that's why people are chanting all this. The only problem that I have with some of the chants is the word "all," right? So I, I don't want to abolish the police. You know what I'm saying? Right. We because, we're going to yeah. need law enforcement. Event, you know, yeah. you know, no matter what. So mm -hmm. to to take away the police completely is the wrong move, and I, I think the community needs to to understand that too. So you know we're not fighting against the police we're fighting police brutality and and that i think needs to become the louder message because the fake news the ones that are opposing us are portraying that we're just trying to get rid of all the police no. but in all actuality we're just trying to get rid of police brutality and police abuse. that comes with defunding yeah. you know what I mean? so, education though like where's the funds going that comes with education you get what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy to me that it takes you longer to become a lawyer to get somebody off than it does to become an officer to set up the whole damn trial. That's that's mm. another argument too. Yeah. But police yeah. shouldn't shouldn't have to to become police officers with just six weeks of training. They're right. going to need at least right. uh, two to two to four years, I would say. You know what I'm saying? When when it comes to 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 actually learning the law, um, training to to enforce the law safely and then being pushed out in the streets and, and given a badge and a gun you know what i mean because these are the people that protect us and, and i just don't trust someone who's who's only been an educated been educated the last six weeks and i want to so, so brother terrell jump in i, I want to yeah. get brother terrell a, a chance okay. to jump in on this because i see i um, see him in the background <laughs> now i'm i'm now I'm, I'm curious like when it comes to you know law enforcement you know in regards to how these people are pretty much in, like, you know, imposing these laws per se. Most of them don't know a lot to begin with, you know what I'm saying? So when this administration is pushing, hey, you know what I'm saying, protect and serve, I, I think when they're actually doing a hiring process, they should do more so of like a, a psych eval or, you know, kind of debrief these people on who they are as character wise, because, yes. you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Like I was talking to a few friends and that's what happened to say people who've been bullied growing up finally mm -hmm. become like an adult, you know what I'm saying? They're able to right. become a cop. Yeah. A lot of people in inner cities, they, they have always been deprived of a voice. You know what I'm saying? If you want to challenge something or ask questions, now it's looked upon as you disrespect an authority, you know what right. I'm saying? And when it's, portrayed as you disrespect an authority, this is coming from somebody who is, you know, not of usual authority, because we have teachers that aren't black, you know what I'm saying? So when you have, you know, a, a, an administrator or a form of authority who's not really used to dealing with you, and your form of expression comes off aggressive, you know what I'm saying? You start to kind of grow up with this resentment. So when you become a law enforcement, it's like, you, you, you feel like, you are the law, so you can impose your will on anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if we're able to kind of get into these people mental before they even get hired upon, because, I mean, one of the things that, one of the jobs that I had was work for, you know, the gas company, and one of the things they did was a personality test. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What do you do, this, that, the other? Like, I get that they do that, but people who kind of have, you know, these mental issues because that's what they like to delegate it as whenever they have to go up to trial and things like that. Oh, it was, it was you know, mental, you know, unstability and, 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 and things yeah. of that nature. You can be able to analyze it before they even get hired upon. So they, so they, they what I do know is that they do have the psyche valves. Um, they are biased from what I, from what I've been informed. They're very, very biased. Wow. Very um, biased. But I do, I do know um, a Caucasian, you know, gentleman who mm -hmm. took the psyche valve he was a, um, a, an Afghanistan uh, vet, two tours, came over, uh, wanted to get on to the, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Didn't make it. I mean, the brother's well qualified, but he couldn't pass the psyche vow in their opinion. What those questions were, uh, he didn't touch on, but to some degree, he just couldn't pass it. And, and in his opinion, it was biased and it was geared more for the guys who 
young. Were aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, young, aggressive. They're getting kids asking questions that you wouldn't necessarily, for scenarios that you wouldn't necessarily deal with until you were an adult. You know what I'm saying? They go into the academy 18, 19 years old. They're asking questions that you haven't had to live through yet, and you're able to pass that test. You can pass a test if you ain't never had to deal with anything. Right. You get know what I'm saying? And, and but I think they don't ask bullying questions. They don't ask, <laughs> were you, were you right. successful? Were, were, were you cool? Did people treat you well? Right. Do, uh, do you like one culture more than the other? They don't right. ask these questions. Yeah, I think that's, that, that's I think that uh, Brother Adams painted like the perfect picture, right? So you take this officer that his background is, you know, he's from some other area and he was bullied. He's white, right? And he was bullied and harassed or whatever. He was the kid that got picked on. And then you take this, this black kid from a community where he does, a black community, inner city community, impoverished, disadvantaged community where he doesn't have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put in the white, in the white kid's community, he grew up with white officers. In the black kid's community, he grew up with white officers, right? Mm -hmm. You put this bully white officer in this black kid's community and all of a sudden, this black kid is like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm tired of not having a voice. And then you have this white officer who's been bullied, and now he has a sense of authority. But when that, when that black kid says, well, why are, you, why are you arresting me? Am I being detained, right? That's defiance. And so this white officer that was being bullied, that passed the test by saying, yeah, if somebody says something like that, then I'll just shoot him or, you know, rough him up a little bit. Exactly. Now, my boy, he, will, he will enforce the law, right? Right. He will enforce the laws. But here's the, the third, the missing piece to that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know anything about the community that he's working in. So how his customer service is all out of whack. Right. Right. He's, he can't even serve his customer. And that is just terrible business. Yes. That's terrible the, business. One thing he does know, one thing he does know is their law. What right. I mean by their law right. is that they can they can shoot, mm -hmm. they can shoot, and they can put as many shots as they want almost mm -hmm. out there. And if you if they hit you and you happen to die from that, then they know that they can get away with this. Yep. Yeah. No what I'm saying? That's yeah. one law. No that's witnesses. one law that's on their side that they can do what, almost basically whatever they want to and get I'll away with it. You know, I want to say, and, say this. You know, as a part of the police reform, we're talking about defunding the police department. Right. We know we know that they have to, you know, send the money to to the, and reinvest back into the communities. But another thing that, that needs to come out of it is that they start diversifying the officers, that is, that the, that the officers need to represent, it needs to be representation. Exactly. Yes. That the officers, you know, black people need to see more black police officers. Sure. It yes. shouldn't be predominantly Hispanic like it is in LA, or predominantly white anymore. You have to not only reinvest in community with the, the, with the, with the defunding, but you also have to, to have the, 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 the social outlets because a lot of times, if you have an opportunity for us to be treated fairly, we'll police ourselves. Yeah. We'll yeah. tell you, we, I don't want to crack that living, living on my block. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if I know that I'm going, if I know I'm going to be protected for telling. Right. You right. Know, right. You know, I'm, I, I don't want to, 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 to have a gang of, of, of wild kids running around because they don't have nothing to do. I, I would volunteer and go help them out at the park. Right. You know, the whole mindset has to change in, in regards to that. You know, we don't want to do it with the, with the post altogether, but what we do want is fair. And I and I know yeah. I, and I know it's I can't speak for all of us. I know I can't yeah. speak for all of us, but if if in fact they treated everybody the same way, exactly. You know, the the, the white guy that had the, took the cops taser, he he got arrested. Yeah, mm -hmm. he got That's arrested. It. You know the the, the 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 white kid with the with the assault rifle, he got arrested. <laughs> yeah. But a black man with a knife or a hammer, or nothing. Black man laid down. A black or man laid down on the ground. Black man, ball fist gets gunned down. So so you know you know what you know what's weird uh, uh, about this all is, 
instead of the officers being held accountable for their actions, they're 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 quitting. Right. They're quitting. Yeah. So so yeah. with that with what that tells me, you know, is, is is one of two things. You know, these they they are they're tr- they they were hired under a certain promise that is starting to be right. it's going to be taken away from them. They have they had a certain philosophy. Yeah. Their, their yeah. type of policy was it's been you taken away from them. And I honestly feel like they're gearing up to become part or to 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 energize the problem as far as attacking yeah. the the people who are peacefully protesting or who are calling for change because it's non-racism versus the racist. And I think right. they're starting to jump onto the side Please. of the racist. Please. My fear with this whole thing, and I don't know if anybody has like took the second to like look at like the world that we in right now and what's really going on outside. My fear is that the kids with social media and TV are seeing a lot more. Within that, then you get less black police in the future. In the future, you get less black police. In the future, because black kids won't want to be what they protested against right. as right. kids. Mm-hmm. They won't exactly. want to get into that situation because we are already showing them. They are already showing them. We're not showing them. They're showing them that yeah, they, they are, are a the tarnished yeah. gang of right. people right. that are corrupting the streets just as much as everything that their parents told them not to be. They're local mm. terrorists. Yeah. Right. Well, well the problem it. is, how do, you already know it's wrong, because right. how can we have so many people sign up to be in the military and the army that don't qualify to be police in the street? Here's, here, here's before a solution they for that even right go, there. Before they even go. I they say the, 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 us, but they can't police the streets we live in right here. They can't fight the war here, yeah. but they can fight it somewhere else. How is that impossible? The, 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 the solution, man, to, to fix the problem with um, racial inequality in the police force, in law enforcement, is at a local level. You know what I'm saying? Because we vote the the dudes that are that are into play. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what's his face uh, in Riverside? Chad Blanco. We put him there. You know what I'm saying? He's a Latino. The Latino people and, and white folks put him there. Not necessarily black folks. I don't know anything about him, but but supposedly the community put him there. You know what I'm saying? He gets to decide who's on his force and who's not. You know what I'm saying? So at a local level, man, and every every there, there's one or two or a dozen black cops in every district. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it really it's gonna take some education and some research. And that also goes into what we're fighting for right now. There needs to be more transparency sure. with the police departments, with exactly. the community. So, and then once we f- figure out, like, oh, this cop is black, or this cop <clears throat> did, did this good, you know what I'm saying? And this, these cops are doing this bad. Th- this cop has so many, you know what I'm saying, infractions on his record. Once, once we get to that point where there's more transparency between each police officer, then we can say, okay, I want him to be the chief of police. Right. I want him to be so- the... The, the lawmaker, you know what I'm saying? The so, law so Trump enforcement. Comes out, Trump comes out with uh, with this his proposal. I don't know if it's if it's been passed or signed into the Congress yet, but there's going to be a, a database uh, of all the police officers who have uh, had some sort of um, complaint or some sort of uh, uh, over overuse of, of power, abuse of power, right? Um, how how effective do do we think that's going to be? And I know it's going to be public information, but just like they hide so many other things, how transparent is that going to be? It's a state transfer into a federal system. Mm-hmm. Is you know they can say, "Now nah, we're not going to do that," or yeah, "Who's right. going to who's exactly. going to pay for it?" Right, exactly. You ask for a new team. Mm. Right. And who's going to pay for that? Them, right. But asking for a new team at the same well, time. Well, let me ask you this because yeah. it, it, it seems like it would be rather simple because if they have a computer system. Sure. I, either of us would ever stop any place in the country by a fingerprint. Eleven all of our background yeah. information. Eleventh Amendment. But they can do the same thing with the police officers. Eleventh right. Amendment. Right. They can do the same thing with police officers. The eleventh the, the police. But listen to me. No, no, no. Police work for the is, state. But what I'm saying is no. But what I'm saying is they can take away their right <laughs> and treat them like a common citizen. If they if they've done something wrong, they should not be above the law. 
Exactly. Yeah, have to be, I agree. They should have to be in the de database just like we are with a fingerprint. Right, but they work for the state, and so there's that separation of state. But, but that's, that's, the, and that's the issue. Maybe there the should be that separation of state and federal then. Because yeah. you know what? But it shouldn't be. It's it shouldn't be. Because yeah. because because if you have a if you have a civilian employee, no. <laughs> but if you have a civilian employee that works for the state or the federal government, if they're civilian, if they're civilian, they can still get a fingerprint, and they can still go to prison, they can still go to jail, they can still get a DUI. So why not right. the police? Because right. they're they're here. they're empowered by the state to enforce the laws. So it becomes a state issue. See, see, what you're talking about then, you're talking about exactly what we're talking about. That's mm -hmm. a double standard then. We're, yep. we're talking about things that interfere from them being charged for what they're doing wrong. You know? Yeah. Being investigated the way they should be. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because anytime you throw, you throw a, 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 a blockage in front of a policeman, then we, we're going back the number. We're going backwards. We're not moving yep. forward. Yep. There's no moving forward on that. Yep. Yeah. That's so, true. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, brother, it's it's here, 11 o'clock here in Alabama, man. I, I've enjoyed it, son. Let's <laughs> <laughs> past my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, and, and, with, and with that said, like we can, we can, we can go all night. We can, we can go, we can go, we can go. But I, I think the beauty in and having episodes is to just kind of take a break, reflect our thoughts get our information. For a lot of the people out there listening, um, we, we take a week off uh, because th there's always so much happening, but we like to gather the facts, right? We don't want to, as soon as breaking news happens, we jump on and give you, hey, something happened, we'll get back to you later. We don't want, we don't want to do that. We actually want to get on and, and, and talk about the research we've done, the information we have, because um, a, lot of, a lot of people don't have the time to read. They don't have the energy, that they don't have the attention span to read and, 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 and gather some sort of knowledge on, on these topics. So it takes a group of men, it takes a group of people, a group of human beings like us to have the, have the gall to, to, to get here and talk about it. And that, that's what I dig about it. So with that said, I know Pastor Warren has to take off. Um, there's so much we can, we can say, but I want to kind of do a round table real quick just to have everybody give us a closing thought. We'll start with Pastor Warren because I know he has to take off. Um, just give us some closing thoughts and uh, we'll hear from you next time. I've really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great dialogue, great ideas, great group of black men having a great conversation about things that need to happen. And, you know, I appreciate all you guys. Just want to say peace and love to you. Y'all have a good night. Blessings and help. God bless. God bless. So we, we'll go around the table. We'll take it to the brother Terrell. Hey, you know, it's definitely been a, a pleasure, you know what I'm saying, to be at a fellowship with you gentlemen uh, tonight. Um, I like that, you know, even though some of us didn't quite agree with everything, which was fine, you know what I'm saying, that's embracing our differences, we still was able to kind of come together and just still advise solutions, regardless of, you know what I'm saying, whether we agreed on the same thing or not, we always focused on, you know what I'm saying, the solution mm -hmm. rather than the problem. And um, it's definitely lively type of conversations I look forward to having next time. Salute, salute, brother Sly, brother Sly. Man, you already know what it is, man. Uh, it's, 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 it's a blessing to be here, man. Every episode, every, every, anytime squeeze hits me, man, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Even if, if I'm late, I'm on the freeway, dodging police on the way here, man, it is what it is, man. So, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, squeeze caught me in traffic yesterday, man, doing the same thing. So, uh, but yeah, man, um, organization, man. And, and just like Brother Terrell was saying, man, uh, well, we're not always going to agree. But as long as we can organize like this and, and, and come to common solutions, it, I think the overall is better than the nut, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. there's there's a group of brothers, you know what I'm saying, in the living room talking about it, but they ain't really doing anything about it. At right. least we're, we, we're blessed with a platform to get it out to the people, you know, who choose to, to see it or not. So right. when it's all said and done, at least at least we're, we're, we're creating content, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and this, is, this is the organization right here. You know, this is the the spark, and eventually, hopefully, it becomes a fire. Absolutely, sweet, sweet. So we got we got Papa Papa Count, Brother Count. Go ahead and take us away. I just like to say it's been a pleasure dealing with you gentlemen tonight and conversating with you. And uh, my my closing is, you know, we all got to get through this together. Absolutely. And the way it looks right now, 
we got a good chance of making it, gentlemen. So, you know, just watch those polls and if we can do better and, you know, everybody get out and pass their vote and, hey, hopefully we can better ourselves and better this country. Hey. For me, you know, uh, me and Fetty and Sweet spoke about it a little last week about the, uh, the black curtain. <clears throat> And having to perform once you once that curtain open up, man, that, that's the reality of the world today, man. You know, everybody has their own uh, own thing that they, they, that they do to uh, be a prominent citizen, citizen to the world, but be prominent citizens, man, to the black community as well. You know, choose your color first, always, man, because um, unfortunately, uh, the color in the mirror is the color you got. You know, and I want everybody to uh, take a step back, man, once you listen to this and, and really think about, like, the world that's going on, man. They replaced the Confederate flag with the Trump flag. So don't feel like uh, you, you, you won something. Like, we took away Confederate flags around the world. No, we didn't take away Confederate flags. We replaced Confederate flags with Trump flags. And as long as you see them, they're still there. You get what I'm saying? So I, I just want everybody, man, to be, to be woke to the uh, to the reality of the world, man. I know there's people out there that support them, man, but, you know, support yourself. Support yourself. The man in the mirror is important because that man in the mirror has kids. Right. And those kids right. are important. So you got to put their views first as well. That's all I got. I love it. I love it. Dr. Dr. Fetty. So I'll keep it short and simple, man. It was a great conversation with you all. I enjoyed the wisdom. Uh, you know, we can debate all day. Everybody has their own perspectives, but I enjoyed the wisdom being passed down by the two uh, two two elders, young elders, um, <laughs> on the call. So that was a beautiful thing. But I'm going to uh, throw this out there. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I want to challenge us on this call, and then those that are hearing this particular podcast to uh, be on alert because I'd like to put together a formal uh, conversation offline uh, about solutions and, and things that we can do locally in our communities to go and start uh, activating that change now so that we can take care of the younger generation, the ones that are out I, I there completely aggressively agree. burning it down and give them something to look forward to so that they can pass it on to our kids and grandkids. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds I love good. I love, you know, I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw my, my three cents in, you know, I, I always said I'm no, I'm no politician, um, I'm no brainiac, but I do, I do know that I enjoy um, community, right? Um, and one of the things that I, I will say to everybody tuning in, and it doesn't matter about race or anything, I'm, I'm very big into culture. I, I enjoy everybody's culture, you know? Right. Um, so one of the things that now that the kids are seeing better, hold your parents accountable. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are in a relationship and you don't necessarily agree with, the behavior of your significant other. Hold them accountable. Right. Tiffany Haddish um, is, is, is a, a very hilarious woman, but she said it best, you know, to the women out there. If your man is out there being racist and you don't agree with it, then, you know, withhold it. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't give him nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's out the bathroom. He going to change his ways until, you know, just to get back on in there. So um, it was a joke, but it's, it's the truth. You know, we need to start holding each other accountable. If you know better, if you got a Big friend time. that's out there, he's doing things that you don't necessarily agree with, that can be your friend. Yeah. If you care about him, put yeah. him accountable. Put him in check. Put him in his place. Or yeah. challenge him to not necessarily get you to believe, but just to justify his actions. His or her. His or her. So with that being said, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We will be uh, uh, back. We will uh, announce definitely um, when we will be back, but it will be soon. Um, if you want to get on, just reach out to us. You know where to find us, www.soundspike.com, or search The Indie Spot on all of your social media platforms. Um, and we'll be, uh, we'll be looking out for you. Hopefully, you'll be looking out for us. All right? God bless you. You guys have a good night. Peace.